I'm Assistant Professor in Political History at Utrecht University. And in this short video, I will briefly look at the way in which borders evolved during the 19th century, how they changed, appeared, disappeared, depending on political, social and economic factors. I shall therefore be referring to both actual borders with a physical existence and borders within people's minds, which were just as important. Between the Napoleonic Wars and the First World War, Europe dramatically changed its internal borders. The 19th century saw a gradual transition from a multitude of variegated and rather fuzzy borders to clearer and more policed frontier lines. For a long time, physical borders predominated, hedges and fencing, running along fallow land, open fields, turf, wood, marshland, rivers and mountain ranges. The first tighter border lines dated back to previous centuries and were usually set up for military or defence reasons or for sanitary purposes or both, um, as is uh, the case of the Austrian military border that separated the Ottoman Empire from the Habsburg Empire, which you can see in this first picture. Or the cordon sanitaire, that is the quarantine frontiers that sprang up in territories bordering on the Tsarist and Ottoman empires uh, for keeping cholera at uh, bay, uh, for instance, as depicted by a Dutch artist for the London Illustrated News in this second image. Now, as states became increasingly centralised and the dynastic principle of domination was replaced by a geopolitical territorial one, and nation states gradually began to emerge, borders clarified and became less porous. European borders changed dramatically across the 19th century as part of the greatest territorial reshuffle of the century, the Napoleonic Wars and their aftermath. The most radical border changes occurred in the centre of the continent along an imaginary line connecting the German lands with the Italian lands. What at the beginning of the century used to be myriads of splintered polities and uh, crisscrossing borders transformed into two unified states, Germany and Italy respectively, as you can see from the difference between the 1879 and 1914 maps of the continent. Going in the opposite direction, the southeast of the continent saw the formation of new states in the Balkans, for instance, on the fringes of the Ottoman Empire. Now, one major driver of border changes was the newly emerging ideology of nationalism, which sought to make the state coterminous with the nation brought new challenges to European politics and held out the potential for a new revision of borders. Within the new ideology, which sprang up among cultural and intellectual elites, borders became symbols of territorial unity and more often than not of imagined or desired national statehood. The reality on the ground, however, was much more different than the desiderata of the nationalists, whether old or new, European states in the 19th century were rarely inhabited by homogenous populations, with ethnic groups scattered across borders, and even within one given state, the same ethnic group was seldom aware of more than local or regional kinship. Because of the new ideology of nationalism, a great potential for revision of borders came into being, which sought to revive long gone borders, for instance, medieval borders, um, or to draw imaginary ones that would contain one nation only. The attempt to create such national borders took the form of irredentism, the uh, attempt to dissolve current borders in order to bring together members of the same ethnic group into one country. While borders on actual maps could change due to wars, partitions, annexations, sometimes even overnight, the borders inside people's minds, that is the mental maps providing ordinary people with 
basic geographical and cultural coordinates changed much more slowly. The main drivers of change for such mental maps were the gradual inroads made by literacy and education, military service and war, migration and the transport communication revolution. For a long time after the new states were created, the boundaries on the maps did not correspond with those in people's minds, and it literally took generations for borders to become reality in people's minds. War, famine, sheer destitution or religious persecution set in motion waves of migration whereby people were trying to escape oppressive circumstances by crossing borders and taking advantage of the industrial and transport revolutions that increased mobility and shrunk previously daunting distances. Such demographics in motion put pressure on the tightening state borders, so much so that by the end of the century, new borders were erected on top of physical ones, what have been called paper borders. Although a variety of passports had been used long before, the conflation between passports and national borders only came into being in, in the 1870s. The world without police borders and paperwork was coming to an end. Now, what does this all amount to? Despite the fact that geographical borders underwent great upheavals during the 19th century, as well as becoming tighter, crisper, more policed lines of division, these very same borders also became, paradoxically, more crossable as part of continuous waves of emigration. Emigration was powered by mental geographies of hope, which designated places like America as a promised land of bounty. At the same time, equally persistent mental maps continue to anchor ordinary people within their village, region or religion, and for a long time were out of step with the new national borders. By the time mental and physical borders started to synchronize, the First World War broke out and shattered the newly found equilibrium of the borders. <laughs>